Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is our weekly rundown of events, updates, and brand new features that are happening with Blender itself as an app and also within the community. Now, this week we have a couple of updates that you guys will find very, very interesting. The very first one which we're going to start out with is with the announcement. So right now there is a BFUSD mailing list that has been created by the light. So in case you want to join the USD work group, you want to become active, you want to get, you know, first hand information you want to get updates to this i'm going to put a link in the description where you can come through and take a look at this it is open to the public so anyone can follow the progress the plan and you know participation itself will be restricted only to people that are actually collaborating so this is something that you need to keep in mind something else which is also cool news is that the build bots now automatically builds once there is a change from a commit that has been transferred to the master branch so you'll be able to have access to these and something very interesting right now is builds for download are made once in a day the box print is also something else so just in case you are trying to take a look at this i'm going to put a link to the box print in the description as they've actually tackled 47 tasks and resolved all of this there is also 81 fixes that have been committed and these things are you know undergoing fixes and you can simply come over to the link in the description and read more of this so with this said let's dive over and talk about some pretty cool features updates something i know a lot of you guys would want to see that is right here in blender 2.91 so with blender 2.91 open there is a couple of features first of all i would need to address something that we've talked about about three videos ago and it seems to look like you know a couple of people are seeing this as a brand new feature it has been here and it is also coming to blender 2.9 and that has to do with the status bar so if you simply right click right here you will be able to turn on you know your video memory your system memory and your statistics we already talked about this if you also go over to edit go over to your preference right here let's bring that down go over to the section called interface turn on the status bar you can literally get this thing up and running so just in case you are thinking about finding the status bar yep right now you can see it and once you have any of this if you close blender and open it back on these things will still stay as they are all being saved as preferences so if you're looking for the status bar right here it is we already talked about this one some videos ago so what are the brand new features now the very first brand new feature that we're going to talk about is the boundary brush yes so pablo has actually implemented the boundary brush for the master build for blender 2.91 and how we can get started with this is by playing with a simple grid so i have a simple grid right here i'm simply going to go over to the sculpting mode and once i do that and stretch this all the way you'd notice we have a bunch of non 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 brushes now these brushes don't have you know a proper icon yet but they are still experimental brushes so we can actually go in and play with them so the very first one which we'll play with is the boundary brush so what does this boundary brush actually do so the boundary brush dictates the mesh boundaries closest to an active vertex and propagates the deformation by simply using the brush follow so if we simply tap f on our keyboard and increase our, our brush size and with this selected right here let's go over to our tool settings you would notice that we can now move this around now this also works alongside with the amount of topology that you have so a quick one is to go right in here and turn on wireframe so you guys can see so depending on how far or how close that this is this is definitely going to work let's undo this so that you guys can see if i press f one more time increase my brush you can notice that once i have a bigger fall off we also have something bigger so we can do something like this and you know we can flap this all the way down and these also have a couple of deformations so you can take a look at the deformations that we have here so we have the bend which is actually what we're playing with let's turn this down and then we also have expand so if i use the bend for example to bend this all the way to a point like this i can choose to use the expand just to expand this particular you know boundary so i can click and drag and of course we can use this to expand we can also switch this to inflate which is you know 
simply going to inflate or deform this in a given direction and we also have a couple of them like the grab which you can use to move things across this is more like your move brush and we also have the twist which you can use to twist things around so there is a very nice use case that pablo has published and of course you can see that right now on the screen something else which also makes a lot of sense is within the boundary brush there is also a boundary fall off so the boundary fall off actually works with either constant brush radius loop or loop inverted so if you're feeling lucky and you want to play with this Yes, of course, you can come through and play with this. So this is going to help a lot of people that are trying to tweak, you know, very basic mesh directly in the sculpt room. And some other cool implementation for brush that has also been done for Blender 2.91 is the multi-res displacement brush. So let's actually go in there, get a brand new scene. With a brand new scene here, I will simply go all the way to our sculpting mode and jump right here. Let's add our multi-res modifier and subdivide these up until a point like that so with this right here what can we do we can easily come right over here get any of the brushes that we feel excited about and then we can deform our mesh okay so once we deform this mesh you know add as much deformation that we want add as much displacement that we want remember once we turn this off this is what we had and because we're using the multi-res we're deforming this object to suit what we want but then with the brand new multi-res displacement brush if i go in here simply select let's increase this all the way up we can use this to recall the history all the way back you can now use the multi-res displacement brush to recall the history of what the main model actually looked like before you started displacing it when you had the multi resolution so this feature actually makes a lot of sense and i do know that a lot of people will find this very very useful owing to the fact that multi res is still going to help you maintain your geometry and whenever you do anything on top of it a brush like this is going to help you recall your history back so in case you want to implement something even way better directly on top of your model this is also something that you can do so with the multi-res displacement brush out of the way we're going to take a look at something else that i guess you guys might probably have seen or maybe you haven't so let's actually take a look at that i will use the clay and do you know some stuff like this let's switch this to pen okay so i will use the clay and make some changes let's just make these changes so right now there is an implementation within the mesh filter so we've already seen the mesh filter before and yes we did see that you can inflate we did see that you can scale randomize all of that but we never saw sharpen so right now you can now select sharpen you can play with the curvature smooth you can play with the intensity of the details that you want you can play with the smooth ratio you can choose to work with face sets if you want to work with that then you can go through use the sharpen and then once you click and drag you can start sharpening your mesh okay so if you would like to sharpen the mesh yes you can so you can literally use this and sharpen the edges of the mesh depending on what you want to do and of course you can go in pick up any brush and also start sculpting directly in here and speaking about things that you can also do with your sculpting brush blender 2.91 now comes with a brand new stroking system that you can now use to sculpt across your geometry so this is what sculpting with the previous blender stroke system looks like and of course this is what it looks like right now so if you're thinking about playing with this you want to experiment you can go through and get blender 2.91 and the very cool thing or the very cool feature now is that this brand new space stroking method is now a default stroke that exists in blender so let's get rid of the cube the lit and let's take a look at that so let's jump right into object and have this set this to five let's go in there apply and jump right over here so if i select any of the brushes at all let's lose you know symmetry click over to the tool section come over here where we have stroke you would notice we have the brand new space stroke we have the dots we have the airbrush and so on and so forth so the space is a brand new one and right now if you're using a pen display like i am you can easily get the most out of your brush once you you know you start painting so if you start painting or you start sculpting 
yes you can use and you know you can work with this so this is also reworked for both the painting and also for the sculpting and this is a very cool feature and a huge shout out to pablo for doing this before we talk about the last sculpting feature that is available for blender 2.91 let's actually talk about something that we already made a video about which i think is something a lot of people will want to know and that's the particle node so the particle node is here and just in case you want to get this going there is actually a video about that so you can take a look in the description where you can find it so first things first you need to get a point cloud you need to switch this from here go over to particle simulator if you don't have that there you need to go over to edit go over to preference and you need to turn on experimental now within experimental you need to make sure you have the particle system turned on click on the plus button to get that happening now once you have that happening tap shift and a to initialize a particle system let's zoom all the way in and with your point cloud here simply go over to modify click right here add the simulator click right here add the simulation you can copy the name of what you have right here so let's grab that and then we can paste that right over here now once we do this and press the playback button nothing happens now nothing is happening because first of all we don't have emitters so let's generate a very quick emitter right here so it's going to be a particle mesh emitter and of course this is brand new you can go over to the video in the description where you can check out how you can work with this so we're going to call suzanne as a particle emitter so this is what we have and we can also call a couple of events so if i go over to the event i can get some particle birth so if i want to get something like that of course i can choose to do that and if we would like to get some forces we can just simply throw in some pretty cool forces right over there so i'm going to also raise this all the way up convert this to a timeline so we can press the playback button to see what we have so this makes sense so if you want to see more about this which is a pretty cool feature that is now available in blender 2.91 of course you can take a look in the description and see how this works so this is about the particle system and of course i cannot wait to see what implementation is going to come out from the hair so if you are excited about this one and you want to give it a try of course you can get started with that right away so with this said let's take a look at the very last update for the sculpting section before we proceed to talk about some novelty stuff so the very last update for the sculpting section for this week is the face set so right now if you simply have a cube like this and you move over to the sculpt room and you drag this all the way out of course you don't notice anything but if you go all the way down you'll notice we have a brand new button called the edit face set so how does this work so how this works is very very interesting so if we simply select the face or draw face set so let's get one there get another one somewhere about here and we can get something about the point like that so i'm just gonna draw around draw around and we have that going so with this we have face sets everywhere you know this is called polygroup in zbrush just in case so if we go through and click on the edit face set we can choose to grow our face set or we can choose to shrink this right now we're going to try out with the grow so if i click right here click and drag of course we're growing that and you can notice it simply grows across where you know it sees if you want to shrink this you can also do the same thing click on shrink and you can simply shrink this as much as you want so these are some very cool features that are now available in blender 2.91 and these are a couple of updates that are also available for the tool meanwhile there is a novelty update for the rigid body so right now rigid body now supports compound shape collision so what this means is that you can have or combine multiple primitive shapes into a concave shape for example you can create a chain link collision shape by simply using a wire edge child object so this one is very very interesting and i'm very excited about some of these updates and some of the features that are coming over to blender 2.91 so tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section but before we go let's also take a very cool look at the guys at blender foundation so the job section is still open so in case you want to apply and work for blender foundation as a senior back-end developer writer editor blogger or a developer community coordinator you can simply go over to blender.org right now and apply for these positions so that's definitely going to be about it if there is any update any news or any events that i seem to have missed please put that in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with the tutorial update 
Free Friday, Tutorial Tuesday, Tips and Tricks, things like this. Peace.